Hi folks and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and this is my update video for February of 2022. And I want to start off today with something that I don't normally do. I want to comment on current events. Um, and the reason I want to comment on current events, specifically the conflict uh, between Russia and Ukraine, is that I've been seeing a lot of people in the tarot and various overlapping spiritual communities um, who have taken it upon themselves to try to involve their energy in the conflict um, in ways that I don't think are helpful. And I'd like to provide an alternative. So I've seen people saying things like, I'm going to put a hex on Putin, or I'm going to, you know, send destructive energy to the people of Russia, or something like that. And I understand that it's very tempting um, to do this in in a case especially where we feel like we don't have any control over a difficult and violent situation. Um, we want to do this out of a sense of making the conflict stop and we feel powerless, um, at least I feel powerless a lot of the time to help. But I'd just like to provide a narrative that's a little bit differently and I'm going to do that with tarot cards. So if you'll bear with me I, I would like to say something and illustrate it with our favorite tool. When there is great conflict and aggression on the part of one person or group towards an apparent victim, we have a natural tendency to become angry on the part of the victim and to want to use our powers to intervene in the situation and to make sure that we can affect the outcome that we desire. And this is natural. We feel that we are standing up for the person or the group that we feel is being victimized. Our natural tendency is to respond with violence, retaliation, revenge, all in the guise of standing up for the oppressed. However, if we look at the history of violent conflict in the world, we can see that violence only begets more violence. That the input of negative energies only increases the negative outcomes in situations. And that these situations are never resolved by violent actions. It is only when the different parties get worn down or exhausted by violence, pain, destruction, and death, that eventually the conflict can move from the battlefield and into the space of diplomacy. Only when we are exhausted do we turn to diplomacy and truce, compromise, and eventually peace. Therefore, pouring more violence, vitriol, hatred, anger, self-righteousness, and other destructive energies into the situation will only make the entire outcome more violent and catastrophic for all involved. Taking negative action in any form can only prolong violence, anger, and hatred. It cannot end it directly. Therefore, if we wish to pray for some outcome or cast a spell, send energy, or make a working. I encourage you to do so from a place of care and compassion for all involved. Instead of expressing anger and wishing to end someone's life, wish for a speedy end to the violence. Wish for the situation not to be manipulated by others or spin out of control. Pray for world leaders to act with skillful means and strength, clarity of vision, in order to bring a lasting peace. And wish for minimal loss of life and suffering and a speedy recovery from such a conflict and for the conflict to not be repeated in future. I know that this is easier said than done, but I invite you all to answer violence 
with peace rather than more violence and to find ways to help um, you can look up mutual aid for ukraine for example on the internet there's plenty of organizations on the ground there now doing good work to help people um, you can donate to organizations that help relocate refugees there's lots of things that you can do to be helpful in a practical and in an energetic sense and i encourage you to choose these options over generating uh, more hatred and anger and violence uh, thank you all for listening i appreciate it and if you're wondering uh, what deck i was using there to illustrate <laughs> my narrative um, it's the cosmic tarot um, by norbert loesch this is a, a deck that was not really known to me until um, somewhat recently and I haven't actually used it all that much but I love the images um, and I had already had in mind to speak on the topic of the uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict and some of the reactions that I've seen to it um, and then the other day when I sat down to just kind of um, look at this again I was considering it for a different kind of reading and all those images just struck me as being so relevant um, so it was a good way to, to illustrate um, I guess that that point I was trying to make so anyway it's interesting how sometimes the tools we need are right in front of us and we just discover them at the right time um, speaking of tools I really don't have any new tarot decks to show you this month um, I have made a couple of purchases but they're not here yet and I've also been working on my goal of downsizing my deck collection um, and I wanted to pose a question to those of you who watch my videos regularly. Would you like to see, would you like me to actually do like a decluttering video and go through the decks that I'm considering getting rid of um, or the ones that I've definitely decided to get rid of? Um, I'm thinking of doing this just to give everyone access to my collection if you wanted to purchase a deck that I have. Um, I've seen some other channels doing this and it seems to be you know, an effective way to sell things on to people that might share similar tastes to me. I don't know. If you have an opinion about that, feel free to email me or leave me a comment um, on the kind of decluttering process. Um, I am going to do some this for that videos that will sort of talk about decision making and collection building um, and what decks I'm buying this year instead of, you know, other options. So I've recorded two of those, uh, the this for that type videos. And I don't know if my narrative there is cohesive enough. Um, I may have to actually script those out a little bit more and go back and re-record them, but we'll see. I'm going to try to edit them. Um, but in the meantime, I've recorded a bunch of videos on other decks that I do have. Um, some more comparisons, some in-depth uh, looks at different kinds of things. So next up, you're going to see a video from me on the Tarot de Besançon. Sun. And then from there, um, we're going to go back and look at a weird Japanese deck. And then I'm going to look at uh, Piedmontese decks from Italy. So it'll be a mix of Japanese decks and historic decks um, coming up in the fairly near future. And that takes me on to uh, my reading because I do eventually, and, and I'm going to get to um, sort of modern decks, including the Rider Waite Smith and um, the Thoth, but I've been wanting to get through some books um, and do some more research before then. So um, this was one of the books that I finished for February. It's called A.E. Waite, Magician of Many Parts by R.A. Gilbert. And it's a great uh, biography of Waite um, and it's so well researched. Uh, I can just show you the bibliography back here um, and all the notes, all the chapters, you know, he names people um, he talks about all the people that were influential in Waite's life, all of the books that uh, Waite read in order to develop his own um, philosophy and approach to Christian mysticism and all of that. Um, the one person who doesn't get a lot of time in this book that I wish got a little bit more was Pamela Coleman Smith. Um, but that's kind of cemented in my mind a little bit more about Waite and, and Smith's relationship. And so I'll be talking about that when I get to, to making the video sort of about A.E. Waite. Um, the next book I need to read, though, is on Crowley because I, I want to compare and contrast Waite and Crowley's um, approaches to mysticism of the occult and to their tarot decks. 
Um, but in the meantime, talking about books I read in February or been reading, um, this is The Color Purple by Alice Walker. It's a, a classic um, of black literature, black fiction. And if you haven't read it, um, it does deal with very heavy and difficult topics, uh, including rape and incest. So just know that going in. Um, it's incredibly well written and it does not um, describe those acts in very much detail, um, but they are they are an important motivation for the characters. So um, just to know that that content is there. I haven't finished it yet. I'm only about a third of the way through. Um, and it's funny because this is such a classic of literature and yet I've never read it. We did read, um, I think my high school was fairly progressive in that we read um, quite a few African and African African-American authors um, through a couple of different English classes when I was in high school, but this just wasn't on our reading list. And so I thought for Black History Month, um, I would read some books by Black authors, and this had been sitting on my shelf waiting for a long time. And um, despite the heavy content, I really like it. The characters are well-developed, and I'm, I'm rooting for them. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, no spoilers, please, in the comments, because I haven't finished it yet. Um, in terms of other things I've been working on, unfortunately my tarot readings for Valentine's Day fell through. Um, there was a scheduling problem at the library. Um, not my problem, someone else's problem. <laughs> um, but that meant that I did not uh, get to do a reading there. But I have some other readings that I can um, probably share with you on the channel. So I'll also uh, try to mix those in among the, you know, the deck reviews and the kind of historical tarot stuff. I'll try to um, give you a report and demonstration on some recent readings that I've been doing. And so uh, as I like to usually conclude these videos, I did want to share some of my creative journaling with you. And I've been doing more art um, and more sort of tip-ins and this kind of uh, content here. Um, so this is um, sort of a, a geometric and color study that I worked on over a couple of days. Um, and these are just some watercolor uh, brush pens that I got. I got a set of about 30 of them and enjoyed um, using my um, compass and some stencils that I have um, from when I was in middle school. I can't actually believe that I still have them. So I have this set. It comes with a little um, red ruler as well. Uh, but these were by Crayola, and I don't know exactly when I got them, but I want to say it was like 6th or 7th grade. I've had these for a really long time. So it was fun to just draw, you know, use this and draw a whole bunch of circles. And then um, to, mostly to work within a palette. You'll see a few colors that stand out that aren't um, repeated, but uh, for the most part, um, trying to limit myself to six or seven colors and then just work within that. And that was, you know, a cool exercise. I often find that limitations actually help my creativity because it's sort of like, you know, it's like a tube of toothpaste. You squeeze it in one particular way and then something interesting squirts out the other end. Um, let's see what else I can show you in here. Um, oh yeah, the next spread. So this one, um, what I was trying to do is I see, this is a very popular style um, on social media for journaling where you sort of draw little pictures of the things you're talking about. And so the way that I did this, um, the whole theme is just objects that are on my shrine table. And so I went ahead and did the drawings first and then I sort of did a little description for each one um, and why it's there, what it represents, and worked that text uh, in and around the items on the page. And I'm pretty pleased with this. Um, the only problem is that this took me about four hours to do. Um, so it's not something that I could do very regularly because it takes a long time for me to um, sketch. I'm still very much a very beginning draw uh, drawing person. Um, and so it takes me a long time to sketch and then figure out the colors and the placements and then to, you know, come up with enough words to fill in all the spaces but not have it be too cluttered or weird. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a little tricky. But I was glad to. I was glad to attempt it once. And then on the next um, couple of pages that I want to show you, one was a Valentine's Day post. So um, that's over here. And I just enjoyed, you know, layering in some colored papers and um, putting in some quotes. 
actually from candy wrappers, <laughs> pithy quotes from Dove Chocolate. Um, this was a uh, envelope that my husband used to um, give me a Valentine's card, and I liked the way that he had drawn my name on there, so I cut that out and pasted it in here. But I only put it on one side so that it, you know, it can go across, but it also fold over here. And then this page um, was just a drawing of a wrapper from some uh, treats that a friend of mine gave me. Um, she uh, has a Korean heritage, and so she gave me these K-Town Authentic Korean uh, Sesame and Coconut Crackers, and they were very good. Um, but this was just, you know, more drawing practice and a way to um, kind of put a scrapbook item into my notebook without it being just a piece of paper um, and actually forcing myself to redraw, recreate something. So that was another fun exercise. And then on the next page, uh, we had uh, a birthday. And so there was cake and it was very, very good. And these are the colors. I made the cake um, and these are the colors that I used for the cake this year, kind of a chartreuse green. And then uh, it was meant to be a sort of a corally pink um, color. And then this is a scrapbook piece. Um, a friend uh, made me something. She actually, um, I helped with her computer and she made me a little finger puppet. Uh, let me put my closing camera back on. So this is my mermaid finger puppet. She's really cute. I'll have to do her on this hand. There we go. Hello, bonjour. Uh, my friend is French, so she has a French accent as well. Uh, but I asked for extra hair, like extra long hair and extra floofy hair, so that uh, the hair can be very expressive with her. And, you know, she can whip her hair around. Um, and you can also, like, pile it on top of her head, um, you know, or give her different hairstyles. Uh, or you can braid it or things like that. So she's pretty fun. I don't know if she has a name yet. Um, but she's definitely a French mermaid. Ooh la la! Uh, so that's fun. And let's see what else. Yeah, so I helped her with her computer and then she um, made the the finger puppet for me and she also um, gave me this. It was just just a you know piece of stationery, but I loved it was pretty. Um, so I stuck it in my journal. That was fun. And it's nice, you know, it's a nice memory um, of working with her. So that's really been it for me. Um, it's been, in some ways, a quiet month. Um, I haven't started my new job yet. That actually starts uh, in March. Um, but, you know, it's been some good memories. It's been some good, um, some good things going on here. And it's also been a great time for me to plan out some new projects. So like I said, I've got lots of ideas for new videos. And I've already started recording and editing some of them. Um, some of them are related to Rider Waite Smith stuff, so you won't see them for a couple of months. Uh, but you know, th that way I won't get stuck in a particular um, part of the timeline. I can just keep moving through it and keep showing you things. So I'm excited um, to share all those things with you. And if there's particular content again uh, that you'd like to see me do or do more of, please let me know and leave a comment. I'd appreciate that. And otherwise, until uh, next time, I'll just say thank you and, you know, be well, take care of yourself and do what you can for your community um, or, or the, the communities that you care about. Um, but, you know, again, try to approach those with a positive intention and a positive outcome. And um, I think that will be helpful to everyone, including yourself, including yourself. So thank you again. Take care, be well, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.